Hello everybody, uh, welcome to York St John to our decision day. I hope that you find the day useful and uh, we are going to give you a brief overview, a brief introduction to York St John University. My name is Grant Saker, I am the Head of Student Recruitment and Widening Participation. And I'm Rebecca Edmondson and then I'm the Student Ambassador and I'm in third year studying English Language and Linguistics. So we're going to give you a, a brief overview of our accommodation. We're going to cover student finance and student life as well. Now, I personally hate death by PowerPoint, so we won't be reading everything uh, word for word. However, I think it is important to go over these first few points with you. So we are an institution that is well established. We uh, have been changing lives through education since 1841. We um, started off as a religious and philosophical studies institution and then started training teachers shortly after, so we have a long history. Um, we believe that people from all backgrounds should have access to higher education and we take radical steps to reduce barriers which hold people back. We want to make a difference. We believe in standing up for a fairer, more inclusive society and our research and community projects reflect that. Uh, we're very proud to be part of an amazing city here in York um, the Times named it the best place to live in Britain in 2018 and the best northern city in 2019. Um, our overall satisfaction score of 86% in the 2019 National Student Survey is one of the best in the region and places us in the top 30 universities in the country. And importantly, we prioritise your future with over 97% of our students uh, going on to get uh, uh, employment or further study within six months of graduation. So a lot of text again. Um, <laughs> so this really is giving you an overview that we are a growing institution. We now have over 7,000 students and they come, uh, our students are from over 100 different countries. So whilst we are a smaller institution, we are still multicultural and, and global uh, in terms of our uh, student body. We are rising through the rankings. We gained 21 places in the most recent Good University Guide. And as it says there, as I've said before, you know, 97% of our graduates have uh, got work or further education within six months. So your potential entirely is our passion. Uh, our student retention is worth noting with 94% of our students in the first year going on into their second year. And that is largely down to the great support that students receive here at York St John and we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Another thing to note is our increased focus on research. Our profile really is growing. As it says there, research on supporting gender equality by challenging social stereotypes, uh, shining lights on environmental risks in Africa. Our research has a, has a real world impact and it's something that we're very proud of. So, the personalised university experience this really is covering the fact that everybody's experience will be different and we have a number of different uh, options available to you. So students can go on placement years, uh, they can study abroad. All of our courses have an element of placement in them and the ability to study abroad. Uh, university will challenge you and that's, that's entirely you know, necessary and important but you will be well supported throughout that challenge. Uh, as a smaller university, we are able to offer a more personalised experience. We feel that our smaller class sizes is something that really does stand us apart. You are a name and not a number. Students get to know their academics very well and that level of support, both academically and in terms of you know, maybe the pastoral side of things, is, is really important to us. I think like, just to add as well there, like, it kind of makes the transition a little bit easier from when you're going into like, from school and sixth form into university because you kind of it still kind of feels like you have that relationship with the teacher because um, you have got that support with the lecturer. You can go and ask them things, email, and they're always checking on you. Like, for example, if you miss something um, or if you like miss a few things and like you just kind of haven't really noticed it, like you're doing it and everything like that, then they just drop you an email and just say like, how are things going? Do you need anything? Like, can I do anything for you? Um, so they are really supportive and it's quite good that they have that relationship with you. Absolutely, yeah. and they operate an open door policy, so they really yeah. are approachable, our academics. Yeah. Um, as it says there, we are 12th in the UK for the quality of our academic support. It is something we are very proud of, and our career service is, is, uh, is very prominent um, to all students, and they go, uh, 
they really make an effort to make sure that students are well prepared for the next step. Yeah, I think like especially in third year now, um, I've been kind of seeing the career service a lot more um, throughout university now. So they kind of do little workshops each week and they'll have things like, I think they had one last week or like the week before and it was something about um, John Lewis came in and we just kind of gave something about how to um, dress for an interview and they kind of gave like style tips and things like that. Um, so that's quite a little helpful things like that that they kind of offer throughout the year. It's always quite useful to go to anyway, so. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. The YSJ feeling, indeed. So um, as it says there, we do put your welfare first. Um, we want you to make an informed choice without putting pressure on you throughout the application process. Uh, that is really important to us, very important to me as well on a personal level um, as a former careers advisor. Uh, I think it's, it's vital that you all make the best decision for you. Um, you need to get the support and the advice of your family, of your friends, of your careers team, your teachers, but you also need to take responsibility for that and uh, you need to make that informed choice and do as much research as you can do. When you go to university, you're going to be living somewhere for three years. So think of it as not just the degree, but how do I feel about that place? And we hope that you'll agree that being at York St John, it, it does yeah. add to that, that feeling of, of, of community. Definitely, and I think even in like days like decision days that like here, um, when you're kind of like looking around today and stuff, like kind of, I always used to go off like when I was walking around and visiting unis, like to have that feeling. And I think like when I came and visited York St John, like that's kind of what I like, kind of assured that my choice was going to be here because it kind of got that like gut feeling mm. um, and everything like that so I think definitely just like rely on things like that as well when you look around and kind of take it all in and do just be a little bit aware of like kind of weigh things up in your head um, and don't just like go where your friends go or anything like that just do what's best for you because you'll make new ones yeah exactly because <laughs> you will yeah <laughs> um, as it says there all of our first years are guaranteed a place within our accommodation uh, providing they meet the deadlines that's very important to us. That's one less thing for people to have to, mm -hmm. to worry about. Uh, York is a great place to be a student. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, you've got everything kind of like little cafes, little bars. You've got like shops and everything like that. There's always so much for everyone. And you've got like the tourist attractions like the Minster. Um, the places like that offer like discounts and like deals for students as well. So you can really like engage with the city yeah. that you're living in. So, yeah. Um, and important for parents and carers there, it, York is one of the safest places in the country to study. Yeah. You mentioned the Minster. The Minster is an amazing building. If you mm -hmm. haven't been yet, then we encourage yeah. you to go and visit it and graduate in there is an amazing thing yeah, to do. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> cool. So a little bit on our accommodation sites. As you can see, we've got multiple accommodation sites. They vary in terms of how do we word it, they're, they're luxury, they're all very nice and they're all perfectly adequate for what you will need, but the, they will vary in terms of price and in terms of the size of your room, etc. Whereabouts did you stay? Um, so I was in Baldwin House, which is like in the Grange, um, and I think like one of the things I point out, when I was looking for like universities and like accommodation, I had my heart kind of set on an ensuite, and I think everyone kind of does, like when you're moving away from home and you kind of want that little bit of privacy, like you want your own suite and everything, especially when you're living with people you don't know. Um, but then I kind of had, um, I just kind of wasn't really that first in terms of like pricing and stuff. It is cheaper to get a shared bathroom. Mm. Um, so I kind of weighed that up as well in terms of what would like be best for me. So I put down for the Baldwin House in the Grange, which was shared bathroom. Um, and I actually had no issues with it. I found it like perfectly fine. Um, in terms of that side of it, you had your sink in your room, so you could just kind of like brush your teeth and everything there, so you weren't having to like clash with people in the shower and you needed to like go to bed or things. Um, so it just kind of works out and people have like different routines in terms of like showering and things and like you've obviously got uni at different times, people are being mm. sports and society, so you all kind of like have different routines and stuff and there's no clash, but um, in terms of like the Grange itself, I really like living there because um, it's quite close to the university. I'm not sure if it's, I think it's one of the closest ones. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's like under, I used to do it in under 10 minutes. I'd get up and speed walk to lectures from 9am. Um, but so yeah, it's pretty close and it's like quite a nice one because it's lots of different houses in one site. Um, so it is quite big so you can kind of meet people on different courses and um, meet people on your course as well. Like, I think there was quite a few people on my course who was in that, um, that accommodation site. Um, and yeah, so I found it really like, kind of was like a little 
kind of was like a little community in a way, like in yeah. the Grange, because it's like you kind of just popped over to like people's houses and um, like in the site and things, and you can all like walk to uni together because it was like pretty close. Um, and I think the Grange as well has a lot of like um, rooms for international students as well. Um, so I think some of the houses are for like students who have been on study abroad um, or doing some sort of exchange programme as well. So it's always really nice as well to like engage with other cultures and meet students um, who are studying abroad. So yeah. And I think as you mentioned before, you said that uh, that yours you only had a ten minute walk into university. Yeah, all of our awesome. sites, yeah. even though we don't have anything on campus, being a smaller city mm. centre campus. They are all within a yeah. well, maximum 20 minute walk to the university, yeah, really between 10 and 20 minutes, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also at the bottom here, we've got the Brickworks and the Coal Yard, which are private providers, but we have rooms within those uh, places. Um, they are quite luxurious, very mm -hmm. nice uh, accommodation <laughs> sites. They, yeah. they are a little bit more expensive. But one of the great things about those uh, sites is that they are shared with other uh, institutions around the city. So you won't just be staying with York St John students, you might be yeah. staying with University of York students, uh, York College perhaps. Um, yeah, so it, you can get a very international experience there. Yeah, definitely. Okay, <laughs> so we won't go through each of these points. I think we've already mentioned the accommodation being guaranteed for all first years. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth mentioning the fact that the contract lengths do range. So yeah. some students will want to stay with us for pretty much the whole year, whereas others will only want to be here term time and the price will uh, go up and down accordingly. Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned the ensuite and the shared bathrooms. Yeah. Um, I think something that I like to mention is the bottom point, the commuter rooms being available. That's something that we're really proud of here at York St John. Yeah. So many of our students are quite local to the institution, mm -hmm. but at busy times of the year, we'll still want perhaps to stay here or if there's a social aspect. Yeah. So somebody you can um, book to stay in a commuter room. You can live at home or, or wherever you may be that isn't at the university and then stay in a commuter room for one or two nights um, at a time. Yeah, I think that's at the Grange, isn't it? The commuter right. rooms, yeah. So it's, so, again, pretty local. Yeah, that's great. So, um, the details. So, as it says there, the applications do open at the beginning of Feb, and you will need to register and create, create an account. It is open to our firm and our insurance applicants. Uh, the closing date being mid-July, Firm choice applicants will receive their offer in mid-July also, and the insurance choice will get those in August. We guarantee accommodation, but we can't guarantee that it will be the exact site that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, is it three? Yeah, three, yeah. So you put down three choices, and then you will get one of those three. Okay, money. Uh, <laughs> student finance, the, the horrible bit, although mm -hmm. not as scary as you may think. Obviously, it would be inappropriate to say that debt is a good thing. No form of debt is good. But in my opinion, this is the best form of debt that you can get into. Uh, for the reason being, as we'll show in another slide, that is always going to be related to your income. So unlike a bank loan which you would be paying from a set date irrespective of your circumstances you have to be earning it's going to be on another slide so test me 20 for so i don't worry 25,725 pounds i believe until you start paying back your loan and if you earn in a month the equivalent less so if you're if you're earning over 25,725 pounds and then for whatever circumstances, uh, for whatever reasons, it goes down the following month, you might lose your job, your loan repayments immediately stop. So it's always related mm. to your income. Uh, the accommodation, as we've mentioned, will vary between four to pretty much £8,000 being paid in advance by three instalments. And your living expenses will vary. What were your living expenses like? Oh, I can't really remember now. For like first year and stuff, I think budgeting was like did you learn a to shop different. accordingly yeah i did in the end yeah <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in freshers week i was a little bit like go all out because i think it is like when you get that like money kind of in your bank account you like never i've never really had that like much money there so you do kind of go a little bit spendy but i think the i think it's the student finance team at york st john they do like they did like an online 
kind of like an online course thing and it was like black bullion mm. and they offered like mm. finance lessons it was like just little information on how to budget like food shops or um how to like manage money and that kind of thing yeah. and they were quite helpful and they did like little quizzes and like you could win little prizes if you filled out surveys and like did little um, information things from them so that was really helpful so you mentioned before about the fact that you had like a community feel within your halls of residence so yeah. you know if you can all pull together and make joint meals or yeah. cook in bulk and so yeah. on you can save money that way yeah we um, used to do like um so you get like the asda deliveries um or like morrison's or something like that um we would all kind of like chip in and kind of do our like little shops and stuff of what we wanted together and then get that delivered so it just saved again like having to even though the supermarkets and everything are really close to, like the accommodation mm. um it just kind of saved like having to carry all carry all the bags back um and it just meant you could get a bit more of like a bulk yeah. shopping as well and if you're not afraid of carrying the bags back <laughs> <laughs> then you can shop late in the evening and then you'll also you'll often get a lot of yeah, discounts yeah. at that time so that can be a good time to shop yeah. Uh, the amount of money that you spend on your entertainment is clearly going to change student by student and mm. maybe uh, month by month, depending on what's happening. Yeah. But you will learn, if you haven't already done so, how to budget and, and live within your means. Yeah. So what do you need to know? You don't have to have the money up front. It is going to be £25,725 until you start paying back, which is great. Um, what, do we have, is it, what else is it worth mentioning? Um, the maintenance loans, unfortunately, have increased by 2.9%. Um, and if you are living at home whilst you're studying, then you can get £7,747 or up to. And if you live away from home, up to £9,203. So that's to help you with, with your cost of living. Oh, the Aspire cards, um, quite a good one to mention, actually. Because um, I was like, when you arrive in Freshers' Week, you kind of, I think it's when you enrol and everything, um, you get an Aspire card and on that you have um, £100 or for like, the, like if you're meeting the, um, one of the specific criteria, and you're eligible for £400. Um, and we kind of have like an online store, it's kind of like an Amazon in mm. a way. Um, it's called like the York St John like Smith, John Smith store I think. That's right. um, and they kind of have pretty much everything on there really. They have like um, supplies if you're doing like an art degree, um, they have books on there that you can buy if you need like a core textbook throughout your degree um, and you like don't really want to keep renewing it from the library um, and they have things like airpods on there, um, they have laptops on there so you can kind of like either build up your money throughout the three years because it carries on over so you don't have to quickly spend it all at once, you can save it up so when you're in third year you might need um, a book or something like that, you might need something that might be more beneficial later on in your degree um, or you can use it. I use some of mine for like Christmas presents um, okay. <laughs> and then I use some of it obviously for like when you're doing your academics as well. Academic Christmas presents. Yeah, right? academic yeah. Christmas presents, yeah. For your lecturer, um, so you've got a really good relationship with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is going to show, the next slide will show you the table which is going to give you an idea as to how much you need to be earning before you start paying back your mm -hmm. uh, student loan. So should you Graduate and get a job earning £30,000. Well, firstly, congratulations. That's an amazing starting salary. And it will only work out to being £32 per month payment. So it's like a mobile phone bill. So it really is affordable. The more you earn, the more you pay. And as I said before, if you fall below that 25725 bracket, you don't pay any back. So whilst it's not nice to think that you've got money uh, debt hanging over your head, it will always be relative to what you earn. Yeah. And if you don't pay it back within 30 years, it will disappear. Mm. So as I say, no debt is good debt, but it's the best form of debt. Yeah, <laughs> I just would say like, don't let it put you off in yeah. any way. Just, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so the fun bit, uh, student life. Mm -hmm. It's been 20 years since I was a student, <laughs> so I suppose this is more for you. More, yeah, <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, I think when you come into a student, it might seem a little bit intimidating and everything at the start, but I think my advice would be is just to like engage as much as you can with anything um, and just kind of like say yes to any opportunity that you might get given. Um, you don't have to necessarily stick it out. You can kind of see what you enjoy and see what works best for you um, kind of as you go throughout uni. But I think just saying yes and trying to like get involved in as much as you can where it doesn't become too overwhelming um, is always kind of like the best way to kind of enjoy student life um, for example I did I did badminton in first year 
um, during the badminton sports club and then I did tennis in second year and I went back to, ba back to badminton again um, in third year. So I've kind of like engaged with the sports clubs um, and there's like a massive range of them um, kind of for everyone really. I think we'll have everything from like volleyball and like boxing, rugby, football and like Ult swimming. Ultimate frisbee. Ultimate frisbee, yeah. Um, dance, everything like that. So you've kind of got quite a good range. Um, and the same with societies as well. So there's my course being English Language and Linguistics. Um, there's like a linguistic society. So I joined that in first year and it's just, it actually worked out quite good because you have students, it's kind of run by students in higher years so they yep. can help you and like advise you with modules and what to take and help you with assessments and stuff. Um, so it was really helpful. So I definitely recommend if you do have a course society to kind of engage with that because it is just a little help, like a little bit of a helpful way to kind of make the most out of your course as well and like build those relationships. Yeah. And it gives a variety to your student experience, doesn't yeah. it, rather than it just being the academic. Yeah, and it's like, again, we'll have um, other societies that are like hobby related, um, we'll have arts and crafts. Yep. Um, I think we'll have like the vegan society as well now. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have quite a like, it just has so many range and you can get together and start a society with like, how many people is five it? Five, I believe. I think it is five, yeah. yeah. With, like five people um, and go to the SU and kind of have an idea for society and like discuss it and, with them. So it is, you kind of have got a bit of freedom and you've got quite a lot of choice to get involved. Um, and it, as well, there's quite a lot of opportunities that come up. So um, in my course, there was like the opportunity for the, it was the British Association of Applied Linguistics Conference to be held at York St John um, and they kind of put out about like volunteering and um, for that so I just kind of like put my name down for everything and was like wanting to get involved in that and it's just kind of like something as well to put on your CV mm -hmm. you're not just doing university you're getting other stuff out of your degree um, and you're kind of like building on skills and stuff and again like meeting new people and like building contacts and things which is always quite useful to do throughout yeah. your time at uni. Um, and as well, there's quite a lot of like events and stuff that you can get involved in. So especially when you're on some sort of society or um, sports club, we'll have like societies dinners, um, sports dinner. So it's kind of like at the end of the year, you all get together. Um, it's usually held at the race course. You go and have like a really nice meal um, and everything like that. So it's quite a nice way of celebrating the year. Um, courses put on little like end of year balls as well, um, or like Christmas meals and things. Um, so there is quite a lot to get involved in. Um, and we'll have events that are held by societies for everyone at the uni. So at Halloween, we had like the Hallow Ball, um, the Snowball. Um, so it's just kind of like different, it's like quite a nice way to like raise money for a charity um, local in York. But it's also quite a way to like, nice way to get dressed up and kind of have a nice night with either your flatmates, your course mates, or like your group of friends and everything like that. So it is always something to get involved in. Um, and it just kind of like makes your little experience feel quite, I don't know, quite special. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I, you know, obviously we want you to come away with a degree and we want you yeah. to go through the, the academic yeah. rigours and, and really challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. But it's important that you enjoy the time that you're yeah. here. You know, we, I mentioned before that you're going to be at university for a minimum of three years. Mm -hmm. And we want it to be more than just the academic experience. We want it to be a rounded experience. The sports teams, you, yeah. I think you touched on it. You can join as an absolute novice. If you've never done it before, yeah. don't be intimidated. You can start something from scratch. Or if you're a very competitive, maybe elite sports person, then there'll be a first team available for yeah, you. And you is, can compete yeah. in the Bucks League on a Wednesday at a very good standard. So mm -hmm. there is something for yeah. everyone, isn't there? Yeah. Societies as well, mm -hmm. as you've mentioned, there are the ones that are related to your course or related to maybe um, religions. But there are also ones that are quite obscure. We used to have uh, the society here that I like to talk about, um, which I find quite uh, or found quite amusing when we had it. It was the Queuing Society, mm. which is as tragic as it sounds. Um, students felt that there was nothing more fun than to start a queue in the middle of the city. Uh, so they would do so. Five or six students would queue up randomly Tragically, with it being York, being such a tourism city, people always think that there's something happening. So they would join the queue out of curiosity. Yeah. When the queue had got to a, a, a good length, the people at the front would leave and leave a group of people wondering what they were queuing for. So they are weird and wonderful, or can be weird and yeah. wonderful, or they can be very serious. So it's entirely what is, what is right for you. Yeah, um, and just to touch on again, I know I have mentioned it earlier on the slides, um, but just kind of like the like community feel that you get at York St John um, so I think when I was like looking for unis I kind of wanted a smaller university 
Um, I mm. think some of the ones that had like bigger numbers kind of intimidated me a little bit. And I think especially in terms of like academic progress as well. Um, so I think look at like when I came and I kind of like thrived in the kind of community environment because um, it is quite a small uni so you kind of get to know staff more and like even when you're walking around university you always like see bump into like a lecturer um, or someone who like I don't know like you might have lived with like in your building or something like you always kind of see people um, when you're walking around and it's just quite nice you never feel like you're kind of alone or anything mm. which is a really nice feeling. Yeah, just move the slide on because we've got few of the points that we've just talked about. So we have talked about the sports and societies. Mm -hmm. um, I think a good thing to mention with regards to the, the SU, the Students' Union, which runs the sports and societies, mm -hmm. is that whilst we've paid a lot, uh, or we've talked a bit about the great support here as a student and the name, not a number, that sense of belonging, yeah. our support services are excellent. Um, we, all universities have great student support, so I'm not saying that, um, you know, that it's exclusive to York St John. Mm -hmm. But I think what maybe sets us apart from many is, is how accessible our yeah. student support is. Being, being a smaller, community-focused institution, that support is never far away, and it is very, very accessible. That said, if you feel that you're not getting the support that you need at university, and we, we would hope that you are, but if you feel for any reason that you're not, You've, still, you've also got the Students' Union. So the Students' Union are based at the university for all intents and purposes. They are part of the university, but they are an external body. So you've got an extra form of support in the SU as well. So mm -hmm. that's another thing definitely worth noting. You know, you've got your presidents, your chairs, mm -hmm. your liberation officers, all there to represent you and, and to listen to your, any concerns that you, that you may have. Yeah. They do a lot of work in terms of safety. There's, um, can you think of the um, latest? There was the, it was like, don't drink and drown, um, yep. respect campaign. Um, so they have got quite, they had another one as well, I think, running. Plan safe, last, drink plan safe, safe, drink safe, safe, home safe, safe, yeah. With the taxi yeah. cabs. Um, so I have got quite a few and you can, you can get involved with it as a student as well mm -hmm. and do a bit of campaigning for it. Um, so that you can, there's always like things like that going on and they're there yeah. to support you at the end of the day. Yeah, the, the yeah. planning, I forget exactly what it's called. I think it yeah, was plan, plan safe, safe, drink, drink safe, safe, home safe. Home safe, yeah, I think um, it is. That was one where that's a, a scheme where if a student is out on town, it doesn't have to be that they've had too much to no. drink. It may just be that you're out without any money yeah. um, and you need to get a taxi home. Then we, you can just hand your ID over, your student pass over yeah. to, the, to the taxi driver and he or she will take you back to your halls mm -hmm. um, free. Well, free in the first instance, yeah. and then the following day, yeah. you will then go and collect your card and, and pay for your taxi fare there. So there are, we have schemes to make sure that you are as safe as possible. Yeah. So we've got the fact that you graduate in York Minster, we've talked yeah. about that before. I think it's also worth noting that York St John is a community for you for life. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of our alumni and the students and the support, our careers team is yeah. available to you post York St John. So it may be that you graduate from York St John, you find the job of your dreams immediately and you're fine for 10, 15 years. Mm. Something then changes, mm -hmm. um, you can still come back and access the same level of support, career support as you got when you were a student here and I think that that's yeah. really worth noting. There's a bit there I believe that talks about mental health. We are a uh, partner in the building of a, of a brand new mental health hospital, something that we take very seriously and we're doing lots of great work there and lots of great research. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got lots yeah. to be proud of here. Um, just to touch on as well, because obviously there's got a lot of shops and like independent cafes and businesses, um, they all offer student discount. Um, and there's always like somewhere to go, if you like nip through uni, you've got Gillygate just um, out of the like Lord Mayor's walk entrance at uni um, so even today like get like a little lunch or whatever um, in the cafes and stuff there so they kind of have like student discount and everything and um, but it's also quite good for like part-time jobs I know yeah. quite a lot of students worry about when coming to uni in terms of like um, jobs and like funding and everything um, but because there's so many of them they always have like little posters in the window yeah. saying that they're like hiring and we're because a, we're a stone's throw from the city centre so you've got yeah. loads of You've got loads of opportunity, yeah. Um, I think because we are a student city as well, there's always something like when the batch of students leave and then like new students come in first year, it's like the cycle keeps continuous. There's always jobs um, and there's jobs like within the university as well. So I'm a global guide and I'm a student ambassador um, and there's always different opportunities that you can get involved in with them. 
um, yeah. as well. So it's I always... think it's a good time to plug the student ambassador yeah. scheme. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the student it ambassador scheme yeah. is something that we're really proud of here at York St yeah. John. Lots of our students do work as, as student ambassadors. They get paid pretty well, mm -hmm. just short of ten pounds an yeah. hour. And the variety of jobs that you can do is brilliant. You can mm -hmm. stand up and talk yeah. in front of people like we are now. Yeah. You could work with primary school students playing mm -hmm. games in the quad. You could go yeah. out to schools and colleges. You can work big events, lots of variety. And I know there's a, a bit of a stigma attached to zero hour contracts, but it works really well yeah. as a student because you can mm -hmm. pick it up and put it down yeah. as your studies, you know, to to fit around your studies. Mm -hmm. So at busy periods, we might not see some of our student ambassadors for quite a while. And then at times when maybe they're on top of their studies or there's slight breaks, yeah. we have a, a, you know, they're on mass and we have loads of student ambassadors available. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a yeah, great run. Definitely, yeah. So hopefully you've, we've given you a good overview today and we've given you uh, plenty to think about. It is important that you make an informed decision, so don't just take our word for, for what we've said. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, go and talk to other people, look on the website, uh, look through the prospectus. If you have any questions, there's a couple of helpful email addresses there. We've got admissions at yorksj.ac.uk and student recruitment at yorksj.ac.uk. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.